Now we're gonna start a prediction. And the grand finals are already live, guys. Clemens Rainer, best of five grand finals. I will fix his name before people have PTSD. Will it be Liquid Clem? Will it be Basilisk Rainer? It is already going, but you guys will still get 10 minutes because I think there will be a lot of long games between these guys. Might take a tiny break after game one, but it's all good. Let's do it. Let's get it on. Round one, fight. Top left side of Hartlet. We are looking at the main base of the man who just took care of business in the semi-finals. A 2-0 victory over Lambo, and especially that hold in game one looked mighty impressive. It's the one and only Liquid Clam. Bottom right side of Hartlet. We are looking at the main base of the man that's representing Basilisk. He has won the weekly a couple of weeks ago, but obviously the last three went in favor of Max Pax. We all thought he was going to play Max Pax in the semis. He didn't. The Italian Stallion. It's Basilisk Rainer. Two minute delay plus two minute delay from your stream. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, hey, no break. No break is pretty awesome. So, I want to answer a couple of questions, but now I have to do the intros and how these questions already went past. So, I'll take a little look at this Reaper. This is a really good start, by the way, for Clem, guys. The first Reaper just hops in there, kills two Zerglings immediately. Clem also had an SCV here, but Rainer decided to take this base. Ooh, Clem needs to be careful with his Reaper, and he will be. So, let me take a look. Can you talk about how SC2 or all the esports teams for that matter make money if they don't get money from players winning? Yes, it is all just from sponsorship deals, investments, and selling merchandise, etc. But obviously, every team operates in a different way. There's not really one blueprint. It's like, this is how every esport team operates. Some teams are starving for cash, others have plenty, and, you know, it really depends who's behind it. But I think. Team Liquid is, I think, a very good example of a team that's been around for a long time and obviously they've got sponsors and then they will be able to close good deals because they've got amazing players, teams in different categories that will get a lot of eyeballs on them. Same way as a streamer gets money if they are sponsored by Lord knows whatever brand, right? It's eyeballs looking at a stream, streamer gets paid. Teams have the entire package of their entire org to offer. And then, of course, there is a merchandise store if they run it. I think Team Liquid has an awesome store with some really cool clothes. Clem is going to YOLO in the first two Hellions and a single Reaper. And Raynor has gone gasless. And if you go gasless, you don't have Zorkling speed. And this is a lot of damage. Nine drones fall incredibly quick. Not the start that I think Raynor was looking for. Well, that is an understatement. This is a terrible start for Raynor. Claymore kind of on fire here in game one of the grand finals. <laughs> Some of you guys saying that Amsterdam is the Vegas of Europe, but absolutely not. Amsterdam is a dump and Vegas is pretty cool. Sure, people misbehave in Amsterdam and it has a casino, but no, you cannot compare that. Hmm. <laughs> I agree, talk to me proper. I'll never get tired of it. Rainer probably does get tired of Hellions yellowing into his natural. There are four more that seem to be very eager. Heartlet is, I think, already a pretty good Terran map. I feel like historically the top tier Terrans have done very well against the great Zerg players. This is not the way that Rainer wanted to start off. Rainer told me about one trick that he has potentially to deal with Clem on maybe not necessarily just Heartlet, but other maps. I will not spill the beans, but if he does it. I can tell you why exactly a certain thing happened. I really just don't think that we're going to see that here. Maybe throughout the series. You guys will love it if I tell you about it. Maybe I can tell you about it. Because maybe Rainer thinks it could happen more than once. I'll let you guys figure it out. But I don't think that's really going to come into flourishing here in this game. Yeah, that's what I thought as well, Jigatul Dipson. I really don't. I think Monaco is a terrible comparison. I just don't think we have a Vegas in Europe. I did not go to uh, Monaco, but I did go to, I don't know how to pronounce it, Calais or something like that. It's near there. It's very similar, I think. It looked cool. Had a couple nice places, but I would not say it's anything like Vegas. 
Four Hellions are going to yellow into the third base. Reyna tried to go for double evil chain, but blocked, but that didn't quite work out. And it's just Clem who's roasting and toasting way more drones. Reyna's having a bit of a nightmare of a game one. Ned is putting it mildly. Claymon with double cloak bench, he's in the main base. Starting to pick up a couple of drones here as well. Once that queen gets the queen, because Liquid Clem gets whatever the hell he wants. Game one is all Clem, guys. Like, Rainer is on 66 drones, but... That is pretty much the only thing that he's really got going for himself. Rough start. Heartlight is a difficult map though. No need to panic yet guys. Maybe the one one roaches can bring it back. A maneuver that I would like to call the loco. Raynor never started the roach speed by the way. I don't know if he's aware of that. He's gonna queue it up right now. Maybe it's something he was aware of. Maybe he just felt that upgrades were more important and... If he only has to worry about a couple of Hellions, that Roaches on creep were going to be quick enough, but he now absolutely needs to fire it up, and he has. Amsterdam has history and culture. I don't know if people pissing in the streets is a whole lot of culture, but... If you want to say Amsterdam has history and culture, sure, man. To each their own, you know. If you like the smell of piss and weed, Amsterdam is your gem. I personally think it's a dump. Amsterdam is not cooler than Vegas, come on. Unbelievable. You have to pay me to go to Amsterdam. That's how much the city sucks. Clem is dropping in the main base, sniping a couple of drones. You guys are having some really bad takes about cities, man. Like, <laughs> F1 in Vegas was pretty terrible, though. I enjoyed watching the race on TV, but I wasn't there. I did see them work on the track. So when I was there, they were building up the stands and whatnot. I know it messed up the city for a little while. I thought it was kind of cool. <laughs> Con, I think I went to Con actually. I think this is where I went, yeah. I went to where they do the movie festival, which I think is... Con, Ken, whatever. <laughs> but Kreffeld is the biggest of you. I mean, Kreffeld is beautiful compared to Amsterdam, but that's, that's about it. Rainer is trying to make something of this game. He has stabilized an 81 workers and hasn't taken any damage in the last minute. But obviously Clem is about to hit him at not one, not two, but three locations at once. And that's why it's going to be so freaking difficult for just a couple of roaches to always be in the right spot. We do have queens in the mix as well, but the queens are a bit too far forward. Clem throws down a scan, picks up a couple of creep tumors. Rainer has one very brave queen that's leading the charge. And that's actually good enough to pick up this tank. More marines unloading in the main base. Surprised that Clem doesn't want to take that fight, by the way, against five roaches. Maybe he felt it would just take a little bit too long to wipe the floor with those units. But yeah, you can see here, these were more roaches. And these roaches don't really stand a chance against the marines with medevac support. Rain has lost 2,400 resources. Clem, 1,500. Hive is somewhat close to finishing up. And it's going to feel like it's going to take a very long time for Rainer when Clem is applying pressure in the center, in the main, in the bottom of the left side. This doesn't really feel like a fair fight. The supplies are close, so we could pretend that this is a very close game, but obviously Clem is just in an incredibly good spot. Man, it does hit us with a counterattack, though. And that is maybe what the Italian Stallion needs to really turn this game into something. And there's a bunch of SUVs falling with the Banshees and the Marines. I think in the end we'll be able to clean this up. Seems that Reina did kind of take care of this little army in the bottom left side. But what often happens with these armies clashing is like, oh, they're both maxed out, and then it looks a bit close, and then the fight goes on for like 30 seconds, and then 70 supply just disappears. Because the roaches don't want to be taking fights like this. The DPS of the terror units is just a whole lot higher. Rainer is down to five queens. He doesn't have a lot of anti-mobile, uh, mobile anti-air. Clem is still dropping in the center, in the back of the natural, and obviously big old drops in the main. 18 drones die. He is doing his best to get a couple Vipers out. Maybe make it up to Lurkers. He's even going for the double Lurker then. Mistake on purpose? Question mark. I don't know. There are some moments where Zerg players do it on purpose. Because they really feel they just need both upgrades immediately to make something out of a game. Mm-hmm. Mm 
Widow Mines are gonna barrel. One of the Widow Mines actually did a lot of friendly fire there, so some of these Marines have been softened up a little. Clem has obviously 3-3 three, three upgrades on the way. The Banshees are still here. These are the Banshees guys from the beginning of the game, and they have been putting in some work. Rainer is sending over a lot of units in the center. Needs some detection. I don't know, we have an Overseer showing up. One of the Overseers is morphing. That Spore Crawl is now moving around, but Clem wouldn't be Clem if he's not just going to immediately move the Banshees away from the Spore. To me, it really feels like it's a masterclass by Clem, but he does still need to finish it. And if you let Rainer get Vipers, get Lurkers, there is still a chance for the Italian Stallion. Not much of a chance, but a very tiny chance. Gun for beat max packs, Protoss super weak. It's definitely a Protoss problem. <laughs> I don't know if living in Vegas would be for me. I think the temptations would be a bit too high. I think Roddy would scream a whole lot less. What a corrosive ball, by the way. Connected with like five medivacs at once. Clem really is kind of playing now with the idea of like, all right, Rainer, it's been enough, mate. I've had you on wobbly legs for a little while. It's been a couple of rounds. It is time to finish this once and for all. One widow mine shot from downtown kills a lot of drones. How many lurkers do we have? A zero at the moment, five in the near future. I do think we had one or two already. No? I thought I saw spikes. Am I crazy? I'm just hallucinating some lurker spikes. Clam is obviously just taking the entire top side of the map. No, needs to be a little bit careful stimming these marauders forward. They were already low on HP. More widow mines can have a good job there by Clem as well. He's going to dodge. Raider drops the Nidus Network. That is the ultimate equivalent of the StarCraft 2 Hail Mary. Where maybe we can get a Nidus up in the main base, unload a couple of lurkers and get on top of the production. I think it's it's the right choice. Sometimes you're just in a lot of trouble and there is not really a winning move you have. But there are some moves that could potentially bring you back into it. Glam is showing up over here apparently in the center. kind of missed it, but... Has just decided to steam into a bunch of lurkers. He's gonna take these lurkers out. The queens will fall, the hatchery will fall. There are roaches counterattacking, but they are just roaches, guys. Plus two missile attacks, plus two armor. It's eh. Roaches alone are just not going to be good enough. Clem even left a missile turret behind, too. I don't think there were uh, a tolling clause on these roaches, but that's cool. Did Raider just kill a base? He killed the base! Man did kill a command center. Hello, Clarus. Yes, you are, but game on is... I mean, Rainer is battling. Do we have Vipers? No. We have three Queens, no Vipers. I kind of want to see this move in the center again, because I was taking a look at that Widowmine drop, I believe. I think Clem did something very cool in the center, so I kind of want to show it to you. We have... Seven Lurkers, few more on the way. Rainer is going to, going to attempt that Knight is in the main. I mean... You guys believe Banshee, one of the Banshees does finally fall. Honestly, it's a little bit unfortunate. But Nidus is about to come online. I don't think Clem is really going to turn around. Clem is going to say, mate, Monday is my day. Guys, that is four lurkers though. Clem is actually going to pick everything up and he's going to boost everything home. And that gives Rainer the opportunity to get a few more lurkers out of this Nidus. I mean, this is definitely now creating more chaos than it was supposed to. Clem has so many medivacs, by the way. There are 14 medivacs. He's going to unload everything on top of these lurkers. Rainer is now rallying more units out of this Nidus. I feel like that wasn't really the play. Maybe the play was to just put everything back into it. But I think if you would ask Rainer about it, he would tell you, I'm just too far behind. I have to do this. I have to try. I have to hopefully get lucky that my lurkers kill everything. That was not the case. Clem is going to be able to clean this up. Scans for days. GG gets cold. Clem takes the one elite after a very good start. I just want to show you guys this. What's this widow mine drop here? No, I've missed it already. God damn it. I don't want to delay it too far. I think Clem did some cool shit here. It was kind of cool, but not quite as cool as I thought it could potentially be. Game 2 will be played on Equilibrium. What a lead for Clay Mall, but obviously an incredibly good start. If Raynor opens up without circling speed, he cannot lose 9 drones against the first 2 Hellions. StarCraft 2 is a very brutal game at the highest level. Clem is the absolute highest level. You take that much damage, it's not going to be a very pleasant experience. We have people trying to sneak into the lobby, guys.
There is a 4.8k Zerg barcode who's in the lobby. Mm. <laughs> 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 I have no idea what's happening over here, but... Cranky Doc Lindsay said, remove the barcode. And then the barcode said, remove your fat ass, puppy. <laughs> 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 yeah, those are just Monday night things, guys. <laughs> just another day at beautiful Battle.net. <laughs> See, head on New York City, Chicago, the rest of America has wasteland. I do love a good old discussion about which states are awesome and which states suck. Can I go first? California sucks! <laughs> Minus a thousand viewers, fuck. Damn it. Hey, I lived there for five years, guys. It's okay for me to say it. Actually, almost six. All right, round two. Round two, fight! Nah, California is beautiful. Just a couple of the big cities suck a little. <laughs> Top left side of equilibrium. We are looking at the main base of the kid who looked absolutely fantastic on Heartland, but now he's gonna have to show us that he can do it on a cold and rainy Monday evening on equilibrium. This is Team Liquid's Claymore. One well, elite domination from the beginning till the end. But this kid showed us that even though he said he wasn't feeling all that hot today, and he didn't necessarily think that he was going to win, even after a bad start, he is willing to battle and he's willing to make life difficult on his opponent. Can he turn things around? Basilisk Reynor. My chat has gone full politics, guys. Grand finals of the weekly. Here is Roddy going live for 195 Mondays in a row. Trying to show you guys some StarCraft 2. Trying to make it fun. What do we get? Fucking politics. Seattle. Washington. Chicago. Vegas. This all started with... Somebody just asking a question. This is actually where it all goes back to. All that happened is that somebody asked me, why is Saro not playing? And then somebody else said, Saro is currently partying it up in the Vegas of Europe. Fast forward, <laughs> Chicago sucks, people are fleeing it, Seattle is ruined by idiotic policies. <laughs> you know, he leaves the door a tiny bit open. You just tell them that Saro does not want to play on the Monday night then. A record scratch. People are fleeing Chicago because it's not safe. <laughs> of course the bar has got removed yeah those are the rules from ESL you're not allowed to uh, enter these lobbies unless you have permission everybody is able to apply they will not necessarily grant everyone permission at once but I do rotate it because I don't know how many English streamers at a time they approve. I think it's like 8, 9, 10 maybe. Or you can also say that you just want to do a specific region. And then there is a very good chance you get approved. But obviously there, there's only s uh, space for like 16 or something observers. So they cannot let 300 people join the lobby. And if then certain casters don't show up for a while. Then ESL will replace them by new people that have applied. And asked nicely if they could cast these games. Not under a barcode though. I was joking guys joking about California I do love the mountains and the weather and the beaches and sometimes the people are very nice too. not all of them but a lot of them can be beautiful graphic as hell let's move on let's enjoy Clem against Rainer especially because it's on equilibrium this should be the best Zerg map that Rainer is going to play in this best of five. Mm, the system that the players use for grand finals are ban, ban, pick, pick. So you cannot do your second ban before somebody picks the map. And Clem hates a Ratu set, so he always vetoes Ratu set. That's because after one veto, Rainer is able to pick. Rainer will pick Equilibrium, and that's how we ended up here. I've seen Clem win on Equilibrium though, he is very good with it. And again, the single Reaper, Double Heli and YOLO is actually pretty damn good. 
Rima is on fire. The drones are on fire. That's good for Clem, bad for Rainer. It's not as uh, dramatic as the start on the uh, Heartlet, but it's still a little bit painful. Clem will now see, though, that Zergling speed is done. Rainer is looking for a surround. If he gets the third heli in as well, not kind of turns the tide, right? You're like, ah, that's not too bad for Rainer. Because now he only lost four drones and he killed three Hellions in the week. Nice snipe there. Oh, Clema. The one and only, guys. Really good, Clem. <laughs> 20 HP Heli and snipes not one, but two active creep tumors. Hmm. No, the only truly great city in the world is Rotterdam. I mean, you kind of onto something, mate. No, Rotterdam ain't perfect either. But I do think it's beautiful. And it definitely smells a whole lot better than Amsterdam, I'll tell you that much. Way less degeneracy as well. It's more sweet, hardworking people. No glamour. I would say no strip clubs, but that's a lie. We definitely have a couple of those. <laughs> One of them is cool. I think you guys can have fun in both cities. The Liberator sieging up in the main base. Gonna get a single shot off. Clem is obviously incredibly good when it comes to moving Hellions. And a little round at the same time, his follow-up is going to be five Rexes. Stim is going to be very quick. I hope Rainer is on top of that. I have seen a couple of games between these two where Clemis is so fast, so in the face of Rainer, that Rainer is very focused on the defense. And he will think, as long as the defense is fine, I'm going to be fine in this game. And that will be the case against certain follow-ups, so not necessarily all of the follow-ups. And obviously if Clem can just uh, catch Rainer off guard and surprise him with a few more Marines that Rainer would expect that early, this could start hurting. This is the last series of the day, yes, all fun, four and four fun all. One hell of a username you got there, matey. This is the Grand Finals. In the weekly, we always do best of five Grand Finals. First two Wither Mines are on the way. The second factory is being built. The drones are potentially very clumped up, but in the end, Rainer does pay attention, and he's going to make sure that this total disaster did not happen. I'm not really loving how this game has gone, though, for Rainer. They had an absolutely fantastic game on this map a little while ago where they both just went all out attack. No defense, only offense. I forgot where that was, but it was fucking cool. I'm sure anybody that watched that game was uh, on the edge of their seats, just like I was. I'm not sure if we're gonna get there this time around. Just feeling the setup that Slam has here a little bit more than I'm feeling the setup of Rainer. There is a double drop in the main base. We are looking at the Hellions because these Hellions have potential Monday to night shit really quick. Fee. Thanks as always for the passion. What? Tell Vicky sorry she had to work her shift alone from all of us. <laughs> Thank you, Nanimba. I will do that, mate. I'll make sure that the uh, Burger King or the McDonald's is on me. Rainer sort of survives, but he loses six rounds, a little bit of lost mining time, and obviously Clem is still here, guys, with all these units. He's about to show up with three Widow Mines at a time. That armory is about to come online as well. Throws on a scan, pushes back the creep a little. Slow bailings. Cannot even get close to claim all marines. The Hellions have died, so now it's all about these four medivacs. Rainer did leave the queens at the bottom side of the map, and he also still has a couple of bailings in the mix, so this could be big for Rainer. If Clem is only expecting some queens here, but obviously Clem is paying attention, because he always is. And now he decides to stim forward. Where is that overseer, Rainer? We need an overseer. First two mine shots are not devastating, it's only a single queen. Here is the overseer of Rainer. Rainer is floating some money. He's got 11 queens, so you would think that he should be able to spend it. You can always build a few more. Apparently, Clem did not pay attention, guys. Unloaded those units on the high ground. And a couple of speed banes. The speed is done. Did connect. So Clem loses a bit of his momentum. Loses all those marines in the bottom side of the map. Sorry that I decided to take a look at the drop in the main. Did not expect Clem to make his first big error of the series like that. Hmm. Clem obviously is not done yet with the aggression. He wants to continue aggression. He's never started continue attacking and continue to be aggressive. Speaking is hard these days. Never started two to upgrades, by the way, guys. Keep an eye on that. The armory finished up a little while ago. The widow mine shots are pretty good. All three of them, I'd say. But the double spore crawler in the main is lovely. That's going to force Clem to turn around. 
does still have a few leftover marines from the initial drop. And all of the action, guys. All of the action is taking place on the Reyna's side of the map. And obviously kind of allows Clem to casually go up to four bases as well. But where are those upgrades, Clem? That armory finished up when? Two minutes ago? Three minutes ago, perhaps? I don't know if that was the epic game during WTL. I kind of feel like it wasn't. I mean, they did go 1-1 in WTL and then they went 0-2, but I remember Raining winning that game. I feel like it was in the WTL game. We have a couple of bit of my shots and both of them are big. I mean, if the first one was actually so big that the second one was perhaps a minor overkill. It's just crazy how Clem is able to pin Rainer back on Rainer's side of the map. This is not the kind of style that Rainer wants to play. This is not the game that Rainer wants to play, but it probably just feels that there is nothing he can do because Clem is all over him. And then it's just about stabilizing, surviving, and rushing out that hive. And once we get into Lurkus, maybe it's Rainer's time to shine. Widow, my shot, guys, could be massive. Aye. Both of them fire. Not massive, but pretty large. Clem is definitely going to lose some steam, though. I don't want to say that all the wind will be out of his sails once Rainer has 2 2 upgrades and he doesn't, but. Like, Clem should be at 2 2 by now. Maybe even, like. Well on his way to 3-3. Just that he started those upgrades a little bit late. Rainer! It's not quite the split. Rainer had incredibly sexy splits earlier today. But those Widowmines did very little damage against uh, Nico Rock, I believe it was. I mean, Clem just kind of stands here. <laughs> Rainer did have plus 2 Carapace for some of that. The Widowmine shots have been large this game. Some of them even fall into the category of massive. But hey, Rainer has perhaps... Oh, Barrel Bailings! Well, that was cool. I saw it at the very end. Clem also kind of saw it, but Clem saw it by accident because he threw it down that scan. And he was already on top of it. Could have been a lot worse. Rainer setting up a surround, looking for those final Hydra shots. But the Hydras don't have their speed upgrade yet. Or do they? They do. They don't have their range upgrade yet. I was like, I know they're missing one. I just don't know which one it is. Uh, look at that speedy Hydra. What do we got over here? Widow Mines is taking the map. Alright. Clem is gonna get another starport and he's dropping the fusion core as well. Double Sensor Tower oh, on the production tab for Clem. Right next to each other. Really, Clem? Oh, wait. One of them is a missile turret. So. It's okay. I don't know where he's building the other one. Maybe somewhere in the main. 15 banes of morphing. Seismic Spines has been fired up. Rainer is maxed out and has some confidence that he thinks it's his time to start moving out. Ay, 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 those Widowmine shots, they just get... <laughs> they continue to grow bigger. And of course the armies get bigger, but... It's gonna be very difficult for Reyna to take fights, stick around in the battle... And see it through till the bitter end, if you start a fight by losing 60, mi uh, 60 Zerglings to two Widowmines. Raina does have money in the bank though. The mega base is doing its thing. Now Clem is also going to be very rich. And Barrel Bailing! Boom! Rainer with an excellent connection there. Very well done. Creating his own little highlight reel. There is life in the young dog yet. <laughs> Good job by the way in spraying those banes out. Units lost resource tap. Raynor has lost 2600 resources more. That's obviously a decent amount, but it's not terrifying. Rainer's gonna try to drop a Nidus in the main. Where are Clems' first units? Okay, he's gonna boost over a Medivac and land the Vikings, so that is good enough. Denying the first Nidus is obviously very important. Because now Clem knows that he needs to be on top of uh, whatever's happening in the main. I'm sure he was already thinking about it, especially after that Nidus that went up in the main in game one. Here on Equilibrium. Throws down a scan, sees the investor very quick EMP there. I'm not sure about this attack for Rainer. Rainer does land a fung on a couple of the units, but there are so many mines. And Clemens is going to kite for days and run all the way back to the planetary fortress. I don't like this attack by Rainer. No, he did drop a couple of banelings. Clem misses it by an inch. Boom! <laughs> Rainer with back to back, very sexy barreled bane connections. And it's the barreled banelings that are single handedly turning this game around if you can even say that obviously Rainer was never in as much trouble as he was on the uh, hard left definitely in a bit of trouble the Nidus will get picked off but in return Rainer does get the mega base 
Rainer is maxed out. Adreno Glenn's about to kick in. 30 more Banelings make it 33, Rainer. It's for the show, mate. Glam has bases for days, but he's just been losing a lot over the last few minutes, and he tried to replace all these units. He's also going for very expensive shit, guys. One Marine is not enough. This night is going to come online. Now a few more Marines show up. And apparently it's good enough to prevent Lorcas from getting out. But Raynor once more. He already got one center planetary. We have the Shark King Infestus coming in from the top side of our screen. Sexy Fongo by Raynor. That will allow these mainlings to connect. That with a mine shot is big, but not quite that big. Rainer was worried there were more mines, but there are no more mines. So these veinings, Hydra's links, good enough to take out another planetary. And that means that Flem has lost three bases in what? 90 seconds. Those world veinings guys on the top side of the map, in the center of the map, they were magical. Incredibly good connections. And I think that means that we're going to be all tied up here in the grand finals. Clem throws down a scan and there's 66 army supply against 99. That part doesn't sound too bad. But if you then focus on the part where Clem just lost three bases, it is very bad. <laughs> GG gets called. Reynard wins on Zerg home ground equilibrium. And we're going to hop into game three. Yeah, you know, those barreled veinlings, guys, they are pretty good. You guys can ask Elazer, he will tell you all about it. No man has done better with those burrowed veins than the laser in Saudi. Casual tournament championship bonus. <laughs> yeah, a couple of uh, very cool moments there. Clem is taking a little look at the replay. I think the biggest error that Clem has made, I know it's easy to focus on some of those burrowed vein links and those connections being massive and Clem obviously losing a lot of units, but just not starting up too too. Clem, his 2-2 was so incredibly late, while it could have been pretty damn quick. And I feel like in that phase in the game, he was kind of doing his thing. He was dominating. I can't really go through. All right. Rainer says that he needs a couple of minutes, guys. He says three or four minutes. So if Rainer's going to take a break, I'll take a little break as well. And I'll be back in three to four minutes with game three between Clem and Rainer. I'll see you guys real soon. Clem says he has to restart his PC, so... <laughs> Rainer is AFK for three to four minutes, and Clem says he has FPS issues, so he's going to restart his PC. Thank you to Portitos for the Twitch Prime sub, mate. I really appreciate it. Vamos. Uh, I want to take a quick look at something. I can also show you guys, since the players are taking a second anyway, if you guys ever want to watch something back, and you want to watch a previous broadcast on Twitch, you just go click on the username here, then you go to videos, then you go to past broadcast, and you'll see recent broadcast. I'll take a look quickly when that armory was done and when he started to too. <laughs> so the armory is done at let's say seven thirty six. No, seven seven forty five. And Clem started two two upgrades at nine thirty three. Like that's that's a very big difference. That could have really changed, I think, the middle of that game. Where there were a few moments, and obviously there were one or two connections in the bottom side of the map. One that I barely missed because I was looking at the drop in the main. When these two guys play against each other, there's often two, three, four fights happening at once. Or at least one or two small skirmishes and then two big fights. And I can't possibly show all of them. We need three observers for that. Uh, maybe if Clem was a tiny bit more on top of those upgrades, he would have been able to keep that momentum in the mid game and he would have continued pushing. Because I think he was doing a very good job in the first eight, nine minutes of that game. He dated a girl from a German town, as he said, the summers were terrible, not as bad as the south though. The German summers are kind of nice, it's not that bad. Game 3 will be played on side Delta, so we're going back to one of Clem's maps. I wonder what Rainer picked as map 4. Game one was hard. Let maybe Golden Aura or does Golden Aura get vetoed? No, Golden Aura gets vetoed. <laughs> All right. Um, Vera Kocha is asking me, did I get to watch any Stormgate during the weekend? Any thoughts? I don't know about you guys, and obviously, feel free to tell me how much you watch. I watched very little. What did I do? I watched a lot of football. I played a lot of Padel. 
I think I streamed a little. No, I casted the Jumi Cup on Sunday evening, and that was right during the finals or after. I definitely opened the stream a few times, and I do like following the bracket. In a weird way, I kind of thought that just watching at Liquipedia and seeing those names that I recognize and know from different esports, seeing how they play out against other is fun, but I didn't get to see a whole lot of the games. Round three, fight. Yeah, but I was talking about every Twitch channel always you, but yes, you are correct. On this channel, it would only work if you're a sub, but every other channel, you can always, not everybody knows where to find previous broadcasts. It was kind of like a Twitch tutorial, if that makes sense. Bottom right side of Sight and Delta, we are looking at the main base of the man who managed to tie things up after winning an equal liberty and with a couple of very juicy burrowed banelings. This is Basilisk Grainer. Said he was feeling a tiny bit under the weather earlier today or late night yesterday. And hopefully he's doing alrighty. He seemed to be in pretty good spirits whenever he was talking to me. Top left side of Sight Delta, we are looking at the main base of the Frenchman who kind of forgot his 2 2 upgrades in that last game and that really could have changed things around. Turn things around. And the end though, still looking good here in the grand finals. Trying to add another one to his resume. He is your record meister. No one has won this tournament more than him. The one, the only. I was playing for. No. Liquid Clam. <laughs> there was no late game, guys. Nobody was playing for the late game there. Can I become a Storm Gate investor if I'm not from the US? I have no idea. I did see an email about that. Is that public, guys? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vicky says that she's watching the stream from uh, her bar shift because there are not many people left. So she's able to watch some StarCraft. Um I wanted to ask Yeah, this email that we got. So that is public knowledge I guess. Mm-hmm. -hmm. Monday, February 19 at 6 a.m. Pacific. So yeah, that has already happened a couple of hours ago. Start Engine is one of the largest equity crowdfunding portals. I don't really know how that works, but I assume that you can do that from every country and you don't have to be just an American. Because if you are, why the hell did I get the email? Clem has been very aggressive with his uh, Reaper and his first two Hellions throughout this series. I wonder if that was in game one because Rainer opened Gasless, in game two because it was Equilibrium. I'd be surprised if he's willing to do something like that again here on Side Delta. Obviously this is a very different map. There is a ramp leading into the natural, which changes things a little. Because you don't necessarily know what's waiting for you on top of that ramp. <laughs> The Stormgate final games were only 3-4 minutes long. I heard they had a couple of very short ones, yeah, but I think they also had a decent amount of long games. This is a mega quick lair, by the way, for our boy Rainer. Clem obviously did check this base. I want to say I assume that he checked this one. Maybe he just didn't see an SCV leave. I wonder if he necessarily knows what's happening here. An ultra quick lair by Rainer. Maybe he's going for a similar build that Lambo was going for, and it really looked promising. When we were watching that French stream, we were obviously not in the game, but it looked promising for Lambo for a split second on side Delta. You say Rainer is gonna win. That'd be nice for Rainer. Be nice for Vasilis. It is a four minute spire, guys, so maybe Rainer had his eye. On that scenario that Lambo got himself in against Clem. And Rainer says, all right, I think I can work with that. We haven't seen any Mutas yet in the series, so it's always fun to see some old school Ling Bane Muta. I assume we're going to get to that. It'd be very weird if we never got to see any Bane <laughs> Spire, 50% done. Clem is uh, just kind of rotating these Hellions around back to the top, back to the center. I think he's looking for active creep tumors. There are no active creep tumors to currently pick up. Could have thrown down a scan, but he probably feels it's a little bit too early for that. Clem's side of the map, the setup looks pretty normal. 
three barracks, one factory, one starport, triple CC. <coughs> she might be a bigger gamer than me, Nonimba. She's been playing a lot of city skylines. <laughs> the Hellions are trying to sneak in. Liberator has seized up in the back of the natural as well. Clam will now see the Spire. I think Clam already knew that it was going to be a Spire. Anything else wouldn't really make any sense. Gonna see that Liberator again almost immediately. Still in the range of the Queen, so that means that this Lib will die. This hatchery is gonna take damage, but it will not fall. Hellions are not very effective in killing buildings. Very good against drones. Lynx, not so good <laughs> in taking down a hatch. Link on is 20 guys. Raynor is setting up the surround. He is waiting for this. He should be ready to dive on this immediately. How many drones will fall? It's five in the end. I actually don't think that's too bad for Clem. Because obviously Raynor didn't have the most economic opening with this two base setup that he went for initially. Only 10 marines. But Clem is making his life easy for a little bit. He just says alright fuck it. If you're making that many units of a shit economy. I'm just going to chill on two bases for a little while. I'm gonna get a turret on the edge of my main. He cannot make a mistake here against the Lynx. He does kind of get jabated. Now the Lynx will be able to stream in, but there are SCVs there too. And Raynor in the end is gonna invite himself out. Raynor's not paying attention, guys. It's the Mudos alone battling the Marines. I can't really imagine that that was on purpose. In the end, it kind of went okay-ish at first, and Raynor will find some eco damage. Three Mudos have come down, only two. One Mudo is super low on HP though. 57 workers against 57 workers. There is a widow mine here already. Rainer has not seen it. Good move by Clem. Gets the double kill, guys. And there's another widow mine here. Oh my goodness. Claymore. So he kills three widows by floating over those widow mines immediately and hiding them uh, around the mineral lines and that orbital. That's a very sweet move by Clem. Clem is obviously just waiting for those 1 1 upgrades to kick in. That's going to make his marines a whole lot more powerful. Going to make it a lot more doable to just stand there and fight. And battle links, battle Mudas. Rainer did manage to go all the way up to 67 drones. Clem throws down a scan at the third. There are still widow mines here. And Rainer needs a lot more than he's currently getting. And he doesn't have a bailing nest yet. I'm actually a bit surprised by that. I really do expect that to go down literally any moment now. But this marine count, guys, is about to explode. Five barracks is a pumping out marines. Rainer is going to drop that bailing nest. Means that bailing speed is gonna be pretty freaking late. How big of a problem will that be here on the Monday night? European Pro 2 weekly number 215. One of the factories temporarily gets delayed. Clem is gonna pump out some mines. Does not ha have a lot of vision. Hasn't really been out and about on the map in a little while. He's now going to try to start gathering some vision, spreading out those mines. It's very nice as a Terran to just have some permanent presence somewhere on the map. Rainer, his Mudos are close to flying over these marines. Rainer's paying attention, he's sharp. Okay. What the hell is this? Just a bunch of marines and two medevacs. Sometimes I still need to get used a little bit to how big some of these squares are on the minimap because they changed it a while ago. Clem is going to sim forward. He's going to pick up the creep tumors. Grabs an overlord as well, but he does not want to overstay his welcome. He does not want to see the Lings and Banes and Mudas collapse on that tiny army. He's going to run back for now. He's now on the bottom side of the map. There's a bunch of Widow Mines in the mix. Rainer has only slow Banelings, guys. And fighting against Clem when you only have slow Banelings is a problem. And it's still gonna take a little while. That with a mine shot was good. The second one is just as good. Those 60 Marines have shown up again on the right side. So Clem is now attacking the fourth and the fifth base at the same time. This hatchery is absolutely going to fall. Clem is gonna do liquid Clem things. He sniped every fucking baiting. Because he's Clem. Clem is an absolute animal. Oh, baby. Yeah, slow banelings against Clem, guys. We'll just never, ever cut it. That was a day and age where that would have given you a highlight reel on YouTube and people would have spoken about how good your micro was for 20 years. For Clem, it's just another day at the office. It's another Monday night. It's like a game like, oh yeah, you guys impressed by that? Nice move by Rainer, by the way. Putting the Marine under the... Or the, putting the Zirkling underneath those two Medivacs. So the Medivacs took some friendly fire from the Widow Mine. 
But losing two bases at once while trying to play middle link bane and losing all of your slow bane links like that and not even getting the cleanup, not getting the kill on those medevacs or in any of those marines, I think is uh, a bit too much. Or perhaps maybe here with a couple of bane links on creep makes it a little more likely that we're going to see some good bane link connections. Raiders is all out counter attacking by the way with his middle list. We'll find some damage. Will these main links be able to save the third base? The natural, not quite. Clem doing a good job and just running away this time. Sometimes the best play, guys, is just to run away. You can snipe these two bane links, obviously, Clem. Let's lose a couple of marines there. He lost it. But it doesn't matter. In the end, it is domination by Claymore. Domination. Very convincing victory. Uh, like, Rainer didn't take a lot of economic damage in the beginning. But he still took some. And taking some when you're going for a opening that's obviously not very economic on the Zerg side of things. Man, I just scratched myself and I'm bleeding now. What the hell? Is this a real sign that I'm getting old, guys? What the fuck was that? I just rubbed my arm and suddenly I pulled something off and now I have blood. And I want to make sure I don't ruin my mouse pad. I think that's okay. I can just ignore it. But yeah, if you don't have a lot of drones, even losing 5 or 6 and then some lost mining time is painful. Mm. By the time that the Midas came out, I think Clem did a very good job in making his life easy. He didn't rush up to 3 bases, so he didn't expose any of the uh, Marines that he had. He chased off a tiny bit too far to the low ground, but not all that far. Overall, I just kind of feel that I felt that Clem was on top of things, didn't take a lot of damage. Got a lead, hang on to the lead, and then obviously took an absolutely fantastic fight at the bottom side of the map. The widow mine shots were massive, bailing speed wasn't ready yet, and Rainer still felt he had to take that fight. And Clem just stood there and he sniped every single bane. Yeah. And that's kind of all she wrote. Uh, Patty of Furniture saying, One year listening to Gabe Impressions, what more could a sub ask for? We need more Gabe, mate. We need more Gabe on the Monday night. Oh, my arm. What's wrong with me? This man is falling apart. It's been great knowing y'all. Mm. <sighs> Game 4. Match point for Clem on the Monday. Clem has won. Let me just take a very quick look. By the way, you know what I saw? That apparently Max Pax has won more American weeklies than anybody else on this planet. Max Pax is that accord master of America. That's pretty crazy. Clem obviously is the one who's won more European weeklies than anybody else. He's won 63 in total. Gabe is in second place with 57. Max Pax did win 40 European weeklies too. So Clem is about to make it number 64. Or perhaps it will be number 18 for Rainer. But for Reyna to make it number 18, he needs to win on Solaris. And then he's going to have to win on the final round as well. So far, I think Clem just looks a little bit quicker, a little bit sharper tonight. These two are incredibly talented. They can both beat each other on any given day. I don't really believe that whatever happens between these two has to do with balance. It just has to... It just kind of comes down to who's feeling it more in the moment. Who's playing the better game. Almost like skill matters, guys. I know that's a very unpopular opinion in StarCraft 2, but... That's kind of how I see it. And to me, it kind of feels that tonight is Clem's night. But maybe Rainer can turn things around. Round four. Fight. Top right side of Solaris. The man who is eager to make it victory number 64. One more win is required for that insane number. Representing Team Liquid, it is Clemo. It's been a little while since Clem won the weekly, though, because the last three obviously were won by Max Pax. And number 211 was won by Reyna, so... I mean, it's been five weeks, guys. It's been centuries for Clem. Bottom left side of Solaris, we are looking at the main base of the Italian Stallion. And a surprising semi-finals opponent in the name of Gong Fu Banda. Reyna looked pretty damn good in all the games we saw, especially the best of three against Harstam. He looked very convincing and dominant, but he's struggling a little bit here in the grand finals. Can he find his momentum, his speed, and turn things around? It is a Rainer. Mm. Mm. I'm a bit paranoid now, but we're good. 
Thank you all, obviously, for stopping by again. It's been another fun Monday. I kind of feel like we had a very good weekly from the beginning to the end. Only after our semi-finals ended, we had those 25 minutes where I couldn't join a game. That was a little bit frustrating. But besides that, I think it's been another pleasant Monday. Another one for the history books. We've been doing it for over three years. It's still fun. I hope you guys are still enjoying it too. Are we going to get a game five between these two magnificent young men? Or will this be the end of our Monday night journey? Hmm. Yes, Max Pax did lose to Gong Fu Bando today. Turns out that winning seven weeklies in a row is very difficult. <laughs> no. No dark mode browser. I use it for some websites, mate. I do have it on Twitter. Not all black, but the blue one. But uh, for Liquipedia, I don't use it. And neither for Alligalac. I don't even know if it's possible. But I use it for most things, mate. My Discord is dark, in case you guys are wondering. Very quick triple CC on the side of Claymore. With a 1-1-1 setup to go along with it. First two Hellions, guys. Keep an eye on them in uh, on your minimap. Because I have a feeling that Clem was up to no good. I was trying to have some fun with the Reaper in the main. And the two Hellions elsewhere. But Rain had a good read on it. I guess the Overlord gave Rainer the heads up that those Hellions were coming. It's a lifetime for Clem. Skill issues can be very problematic, especially in the world of Starcraft. Good news for Rainer is that we know for Rainer it will never be a skill issue. And neither will it be for Klima. Mm -hmm. And rather than why can't you play the game zoomed out like that? Uh, that is just the decision that Blizzard made a very long time ago. I don't know if I would really like it. There might be a few moments ever where it's nice to zoom out like that, but those are just the rules, mate. Starcraft 2 was meant to be played like this, or this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I would personally not have a problem with it if people could zoom out, but whatever. The funny thing is, when I started playing Starcraft 2, I was actually married to four to three monitors, so I saw even a whole lot less than we currently do. Only after a couple of months is Clem, by the way, is killing two queens here. Has only lost a single heli, and that is not the start that Rainer is looking for. There is a Liberator that's sieging up over here as well. Mm, one queen will fall, and look at Clem. He goes for drones afterwards. I have the feeling that he was targeting them. Is he still killing more queens with the Hellions and the Reaper? Obviously, he has been losing some units as well. Six Hellions and the Liberator in the end. How do we like that, guys? How do we like that? Four queens, 17 zerglings, two drones for six hellions and a liberator. I kind of feel like that's not too bad for Raynor, but I'm not sure if he's happy with it. If you are a zerg or a Terran, let me know if you would be happy with it and from which point of view you would be happy with it. Hello, Coco. Coco. How's Coco on this lovely Monday night? Oh my goodness, and Irma Jones! Ah. Now I'm gonna blush. I mean, Coco I'm used to, but Irma! Shout out to the Primal Scientist as well for the Twitch Prime, I appreciate it. Clem loads up 11 Marines and he's gonna fly them to the other side of the map. Very quick armory this time around. First free Winnowites already on the way. Second factory gets splinted down. Clem likes building that. That one a bit out there, right? Um, I'll answer your question soon, mate. I think there's going to be a little too much happening right now, but your question is fine, Pellegrosso. Rainer with a tiny run by is going to grab a few SCVs. Clem has unloaded his 11 Marines in the top left. Rainer still has Queens. He has eight Queens in total. And five of them are in the top left side. I do hope that means that he is not going to have a larva problem in the near future. But I guess with a macro hatch and all these extra bases going up, it is okay. -ish. Somebody's asking me, TLDR, what is more difficult? Commentating the way that I'm currently doing while observing or having somebody else do it for me? That truly depends on who you make me co-cast with. 
if I have to do it alone, I'd much rather be my own observer. Uh, if I am commentating with somebody else, then I understand that we often work with somebody else being the dedicated observer. I would say it truly really just depends on who I'm working with. Some people are easier than others, right? But it also depends on what kind of style you're going for. Like, I am not covering the weekly like it's I am Katowice Grand Final, because that would just be silly to me. So. For the size of this tournament and the consistency of this tournament happening, I kind of like it like this. Right now, there's a lot of Banelings morphing. A couple of slow Banelings will connect this time around because the links were there to make it difficult for these Marines to escape. That actually went kind of decent for Rainer. I would say that that could have gone a whole lot worse. Now 11 Marines have died, two Widow Mines, and you know, the Rainer really lost extra, a couple of extra links. Seems that uh, the opinions were all over the place on who that opening was good for. Losing Queen sucks, but obviously losing your Hellion sucks too. <laughs> Clem is splitting up his army. Reyna has done a very good job in spreading some creep here. Nine minutes into Solaris. But Clem way more on, on uh, point. I showed you guys obviously in between these games. That last game Clem started 2-2 at like what was it? 9.35 or something? 9.33? Whatever the hell it was. Now we're not even nine minutes into the game. And these upgrades are halfway done. It really is going to make a very big difference by the time they kick in. But maybe even before they kick in. Clem is just on point man. Kind of feels everywhere we look. Lem is doing all the right things, sniping every single veiling, sniping queens, and Rainer is now on the verge of dying. Kind of like a head kick just landed out of nowhere in the MMA fight, and all of a sudden the fighter is on wobbly legs, and we are wondering if he will make it to the end of the round. It's everywhere we look, Clem is just all over Rainer. Kind of the feeling that I had before we even hopped into this game. So Clem is feeling it a little more than Rainer today. Clem is quick, couple of Bane links got picked off, one or two of them kind of make it through the cracks and connect with the front line of the Marines, but the Marines didn't even die. And all of this is happening before that upgrade advantage is kicking in. Clem lost on Solaris, but it seems like that is the only map that he's going to lose on tonight. Reyna does have a Hive on the way, but it's not like an ultra mega quick Hive. This looks very grim. Today kind of feels that like Clem was just a little too good. Clem has these moments where he really is on point and if you are not at 100% against Clem, even if you're playing alright, you can look very good against many other players, but if you're like at 95, 90 something, then it's just not good enough. To defeat Clem in this matchup, you need to bring your A game and your A game only. If Clem finds a few more big Widowmine connections, there was a bailing flank, very cool bailing flank by Reyna, but Clem is on top of that one as well. At the same time, he's got Marines and Marauders in the natural. He's going to kill that Evo plus two melee. Denied. Missile attacks. Denied. And overall, this kind of feels that. This best of five, a bit of a. Smackdown. Clem is cooking. Reyna has done his best. He played all right. He did tell us that he was feeling a little under the weather before this tournament started. But he decided to play. He wants to play. He wants to stay a bit more active than what they did in the past. And I think overall, second place, something that a lot of people will dream of, can be very proud of. Yeah. Played a couple of very good games, especially against players like Arson, that gave him a lot of troubles in the past. But here in the Grand Finals, kind of feels like it's all Clem. Clem is making everything look kind of easy. He's guiding, he's macroing, he's microing. He's making all the correct choices, and there are three or four choices to make at once. Reyna does still have 180 supply, and he's about to get seismic spine, so... Yes, there is that tiny lifeline, right? That little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, and that light is the Lurkus. And I have the feeling that we are not going to see too many Lurkus in this game. Reyna does still have a few Banes here, those Banes will connect. Clem is, of course, in the natural. And I have the feeling that Reyna cracked every single unit he had to deal with that army in the center of the map. Clem casually walks into the natural, kills the natural. And pick up eight marines here, drop them in the back of the main. Uh, Reyna is going to prevent that. So. Well done. I'm obviously not going to slow down. At this point, up one upgrade. In the future, could be up two. And if he doesn't forget plus three armor, even three upgrades. Seven lurkers, guys. Is there a chance with seven lurkers? There is a ghost academy already, but... 
These lurkers have range, so Seismic Spines is done, and after Talons has not quite been fired up yet. We're well, definitely doing an alrighty job here in battling. Shout out to Noam Chomsky. Greetings, Roddy. Thank you, mate, for the six months. Crazy amount of creep in the center of the map, by the way. And we do have a Hell Mary Knight as one more big Wait a mind shot is going to land. Rainer has those lurkers, and I think he's gonna put those lurkers in the Nidus almost immediately because he probably feels that that is his best chance. Lem is gonna burrow with a mine next to it. Lurkers will come out. All right, guys. Is there a wolf where lurkers can do their thing? Lem is like, oh, come on, fucking lurkers. We have no liberators, only a couple of mines. First ghosts are in production. Lem is actually donating some SCVs there. I wonder if Clem goes for the Nidus first. Yeah, yeah. This time around, Rainer is not going to do the same thing as he did on Heartlet, where he just leaves the Lurkus. Rainer will grab his Hydras and Lynx, though, to run into the third phase. This final game is about to get a little more exciting. Clem does have plus three effect. That is incredibly important to keep in mind. All the Lurkus are gone from the main. Rainer doesn't really have a lot of money in the bank, but he does have Lurkus coming out of this Nidus network right now. Clem's up in supply, but for the first time in this game, is actually in a very uncomfortable spot. Reyna does not have that Lurker speed upgrade, but hey, Lurker range is good. Clem could honestly, I think, temporarily let this base go. What's the ghost count? Only two. Another knight is trying to go up in the back of the main. I mean, kudos to Reyna, he really is battling, and he's trying to make something out of this. He definitely has in the last minute of this game. Maybe might even be good enough to send us to the most magical game 5. Clem, your marines, you gotta take out this Nidus. Raider morphing a bunch of Banes, sneaking out a few more drones as well. Dark account still at 7. I'm really used to do something about that grid. Another Nidus attempt in the back of the natural as Rainer is gonna try to get on top of this planetary in the center. Clem has one ghost very far in the front. That's not where that ghost is supposed to be. Those with mine shots are absolutely humongous. So most of the links disappear immediately. The Nidus does come online though, and the Lurkers have actually rotated around. Clem is gonna try to stay on top of it from many different angles, but Lurkers are so freaking good. Lurkers can be tanky. Whoa, that's a close call, Clem. In the end, he gets them, a sweet baby Jesus, that did cost him an arm and a leg. But these Widow Mines are still here. Rainer did not have an Overseer. 91 drones still for Rainer. There's another Nidus is gonna come online. The only real sad thing is, guys, Rainer rebuilt these Evos, and I wanna say he never used them, but he's got plus three armor on the way. Lorcus! <laughs> that was very close to actually being Rainer's game. I don't think we're quite there yet. I think if anything, if Clem can just crank out a few more goals, he should be fine. But he did lose the goals. Rainer sets up a very big Ling run by. These Lings are now going to get into the main. They don't have the best upgrades ever. But they are kind of a destruction maneuver. And that does allow these Lurkers to get on top of the center planetary. Look at this kid go. He says there are no smackdowns when I'm playing. I will make everyone work for it. Now the Lurk Chaos is pretty high. There are 10 of them in total. Still like, I still think it's Clem favored, but I do think that this game became incredibly hectic. And Clem is now stepping on creep in range of a lot of the lurkers. He does gun down a couple of them without losing too much. And not a ghost does fall. Ghost count is only at three. Vayner has done such a good job in making this map all of a sudden feel like a freaking nightmare for Clem. Everywhere we look, all we hear and all we see are lurkers attacking. Whether it's bio, Planetaries, command centers, SCVs. Clem does throw down a very important scan, burrows a couple of widow mines. Good snipe, does not want to snipe. Seems like this base in the bottom right side is going to fall because I think the bailing count is just way too high. Rainer gets more than just the base. He gets the SCVs too. Clem says, All right, I've got so many Marines and Marauders, I can't really stim into all those lurkers. But what I can do is take out your bases on your side of the map. Slowly but steady, it's starting to look like Clem has retaken control of this gate. Unless he loses this PF2, that obviously becomes problematic. Clem's army is so freaking big though. And his upgrades are very good too. The only thing he doesn't have yet is like the perfect anti-lurker army. How many orbitals are left? We are looking at five orbitals, one command center, one planetary. Where is that PF? Oh, it's over here. Clem throws on a scan on this base. Sees that it's fully saturated. 
148 supply against 93, but a lot of it is in Marines and Marauders and 17 Widowmites. And Lurkers don't really care about Widowmites. Clam, there's more Lurkers here. Base is under attack. Rain is sending over a lot of extra links. The Widowmines are going to burrow. This is going to be bloody. It's going to be messy. A bit of friendly fire, actually, on a couple of these mines. But there's no Overseer. We only have one Overseer on the map. Rain splits off a couple of links. Activates these three Widowmines in the center. This really has turned into an awesome game. I kind of felt the Clem was all over Rainer. And I still think Rainer could be in trouble. Should be in trouble. Losing this base and all the drones. Obviously, after losing the center base as well. Painful. Rain is playing Minesweeper for the last minute. And he's actually done a very good job. Could have like six or seven Widowmites. The Lynx don't have Adreno Glands and they don't have uh, plus two melee. So these are actually very underwhelming Lynx. Nice fungal, but not really a fungal that Rainer can capitalize on. Plus two is about to finish up. Makes the Lynx a bit more powerful, but. Yeah. Can't even say that this is one of these games where it really feels that Rainer should have done Adreno Glands a long time ago. Ideally, you always get it because it's a super important upgrade. But this is actually a game where Rainer was broke for a while, was nowhere near maxed out, and he needed the most magical comeback to even make something of this game. So then putting all of your pennies into Lurkus and Nidus Network, I think that makes sense. Somebody makes these games lag a tiny bit, by the way. I blame the Australian casters. I think the pig just woke up and snuck into this lobby. Fucking pig. Scandalous behavior. Rainer with another counterattack in this center base. He's going to take out a bunch of SCPs. Might get the orbital too. As the last few Hydras are really putting in overtime. And overtime does not always pay off. And does not pay off everywhere. But it will pay off here. Nida's number. Lord knows what. Into the main base. Rainer is going to... There are all the lurkers here. Might even go. Maybe you almost need something magical here, right? Like hold position, but how do you pull off hold position lurkers on creep? Clem is always going to scan. Rain is going to try to get Burrow too. Is up 30 workers, but it's down 51 army supply. I still think it looks very bad for Rainer because he doesn't even have like adreno glands. He doesn't have plus three. Plus three. Doesn't have an ultralisk cavern or a great aspire. No, I don't think he would want to go blue blood. The only thing that's somewhat promising is that the ghost count is only 5. If we were looking at like 12 goals, then... Oh, the winner my shit. If you're looking at 15 goals, then I would say it's impossible. Against 5 goals with Lurkers, it's technically possible. Clem is going to split the buy units. He's going to throw down the scan and he's going to take out almost every single Lurker. And all that's left is a bunch of plus 2 melee links. Hey, 33 Lurkers have died. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I don't want to play the max one. It's kind of sad. F's in the chat for the Lurkers. 32. Another link counter, but these links are going to have a hard time battling 3 3 Marines. Especially if there's a Widow Mine or two in the mix, and there are Widow Mines everywhere we go. It's almost like Clem is anticipating these mines. Rain and Supply has taken a serious nosedive and will continue to drop. It was a long time coming, but I believe this is going to be it. Not even the greatest fungals are going to turn this game around for Rainer. He made something out of danger. He was in all sorts of trouble. On Hardlet, on Solaris. But in the end, this European Pro Tour weekly belongs to the one and only kid from France. Liquid Clément, back on top after five weeks. Liquid Clam. <laughs> Must have felt like a lifetime to him. I bet Clem is a tiny bit confused about how some of these games played out, where he's like... You know, I'm winning like everywhere and all of a sudden Lurkers, Nidus, and it looked for a split second that this game could potentially slip away from him. But he just always has such a freaking large army. Well deserved by Clem. He makes it number 64. GG's. And that is going to do it for me, guys. I'm going to have to keep it short because I have to help Vicky out. She's doing uh, the bar shift and I promised that I would help her close. And just in case there's a bunch of drunk people there, it's nice for her if I'm there too, so... I hope you guys had fun. Another successful Monday in the history books. Shout out to ESL for running this tournament. Shout out to Claymont for winning another edition. Thanks to all the players, I guess, that signed up and played. Thanks to you guys. Oh, it's already here. Oh, I guess that's it. But I know we also have to eat, so it's okay. I'm going to wrap it up. Um, thank you, guys. 
it was fun i hope you guys enjoyed it congrats to clam for winning 200 bucks couple ept points he doesn't need those points he's already qualified for the esports world cup so it is what it is <laughs>